Good morning and welcome to St. Jacob Lutheran Church. And uh, my name is Pastor Kurt Ulenbrock. Um, today is Easter. Uh, happy Resurrection of our Lord Sunday. Um, we're glad that you are with us and uh, pray in spite of what is happening in our world that you can use this service to um, fill your hearts with joy because God is not dead and Christ is alive and we celebrate that today. We begin um, by singing our opening hymn, that's hymn 157, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn 157. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. We read responsibly the call to worship. Christ is risen from the dead and lives among us, bringing hope and joy to all who believe in him. We, we rejoice because we have been raised to a new life with Christ through faith. Our Lord's resurrection is the proof that we shall pass through death unto life if we believe in Jesus as our Savior from sin. Our faith in Christ is a gift from God, which brings us into a saving relationship with our Lord. The risen Christ inspired his followers to spread the good news of the gospel. Holy Spirit, please use us to proclaim that salvation is found in the name of Jesus. He is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. We confess our sins. Father, forgive us for doubting the greatness of your power, sufficient to raise man from the dead. Pardon us for thinking of death as the end of life, not realizing that the best is, is yet to come in heaven. Be merciful to us when we have allowed ourselves to be overcome by defeat, failing to believe that you are in control of our life. Grant us forgiveness in the name of the one who died for us on Good Friday and rose for us on Easter Sunday to witness to your power and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
a called and ordained servant of the resurrected and living Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. It is my joy to proclaim the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord Lord is risen, and we are his forgiven forgiven children. children. Alleluia. We continue by singing the first two verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives, 152, verses 1 and 2. resurrection of your son Jesus Christ you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever amen The Old Testament lesson for this Resurrection Sunday uh, is recorded in Isaiah uh, 25, reading verses 1 through 8. First, Isaiah praises the Lord for what he has done, and um, finally, in the last few verses, he uh, tells us about the banquet that is to come because of Christ's resurrection, and all those who believe in him uh, will enjoy uh, that heavenly banquet. O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name because you have done astounding things, plans laid long ago that are firm and faithful. For you have reduced the city to a heap, the fortified city to ruins. The citadel of foreigners is no longer a city at all. It will never be rebuilt. That is why powerful peoples will honor you. The cities of cruel nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold for the poor, a stronghold for the needy in their distress. You have been a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. And the breath of the ruthless is like a rainstorm battering a wall, like a hot wind drying up the desert. You put down the uproar of foreigners. It is like heat cooled by the shade of a cloud. The song of the ruthless is silenced. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of aged wines, with the best cuts of meat and with the finest wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples, the burial cloth stretched over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth, for the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. We continue to by singing um, verses 5 and 6 of hymn 152, uh, stanzas 5 and 6.
recorded in 1 Corinthians 5, reading verses 6 through 8. In this section, um, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul says that uh, boasting is not good, that we should purge out the old yeast of uh, our sin and uh, recognize that the Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. Um, that is uh, uh, worthy advice uh, for us to heed uh, this Easter. We read from 1 Corinthians 5. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Purge out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch, just as you are unleavened. For, your, for our Passover lamb has been sacrificed, namely Christ. So let us keep celebrating the festival, not with old yeast, not with the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is the epistle of our Lord. We continue by singing stanzas 7 and 8 of hymn 152. chapter 16 beginning at verse 1. Here we read of how after the Sabbath was passed that the women um, brought spices to Jesus' grave and they wanted to anoint his body. And this was very on, early on, on uh, uh, Sunday morning. And uh, Mark tells us what happened, um, what amazing thing happened um, as they approached uh, the tomb. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus. Very early on, the first day of the week, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. They were saying to each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and hurried away from the tomb, trembling and perplexed. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the Gospel of our Lord. We will now have our object lesson. Maybe you can see uh, this banana. It looks like it's on its way to being spoiled or rotten. Um, it has an odor already, and I imagine if I let it go even more, it would um, give even more of a foul smell and a smelling odor. But uh, in our uh, sermon text for today, it said that um, God did not abandon Jesus to the grave, nor did he let his Holy One see decay. And so we are reminded that um, 
while Jesus uh, did die, he did not um, decay. Um, although he did die, so um, sure was his resurrection, so um, complete uh, was uh, his work uh, that he had done for the Lord, and so quickly was uh, he raised back to life uh, that his body never saw decay. We uh, then can uh, be assured, uh, even with our uh, sense of smell, that uh, Jesus uh, is our Savior, that he did not decay, and that he will live forever. And because of him, uh, we will also live forever. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us see that while things on this earth spoil and uh, uh, rot, and um, from the process of bodies uh, decaying and decomposing, there can be an odor. And there was no order with you, uh, because the Lord uh, saw that your body would not see decay. And uh, for that, uh, we can be assured that Jesus is our Savior, uh, and that he can uh, not only uh, raise himself, but raise us uh, to eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. We continue with the next hymn we'll sing in Christ Jesus Lay in Death's Drawn Bands. Uh, hymn 720, we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5 of uh, hymn 720. peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has risen so that we too might rise. Our text is Psalm 16. I'll read that now. 
Guard me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. The holy ones who are in the land are glorious. All my delight is in them. Those who chase after another God will increase their sorrows. I will not pour out their drink offerings of blood. I will not take up their names on my lips. Lord, you are the cup that has been given to me. You have secured an allotment for me. The property lines chosen for me fall in pleasant places. Yes, a delightful inheritance is mine. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. Even my flesh will dwell securely. Because you will not abandon my life to the grave. You will not let your favored ones see decay. You have made known to me the path of life, fullness of joy in your presence, pleasures at your right hand forever. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, but this year the celebration is very different. This service was recorded with only a few people present. If you are taking part in this worship on Easter Sunday, you are probably at home with your family or possibly alone by yourself. This Easter, most churches will uh, are not offering an Easter breakfast and Easter egg hunt or festive musical worship services for uh, large crowds, and we all know why. The COVID-19 virus has caused many state governments to take precautions. This is unprecedented, it has never occurred before in the history of the world. Because of the pandemic, people have been ordered to isolate or stay at home. So Christians are prevented from praising the Lord publicly at Easter. This year, young girls will not be wearing colorful dresses. Boys will not put on dress clothes. Women will not don Easter bonnets and gloves. And men will not drive their families to church to praise our risen Lord. But God is not dead. Christ is, doesn't lie in the grave. And Easter is not canceled. We still rejoice that Christ is risen today. As we conclude our series on the playlist of, uh, the, uh, for the Passion, we will find joy and comfort in Psalm 16. Psalm 16 rejoices in being in the presence of God, who is our safe haven. It is part of a series of psalms that explore the theme of God's presence. Psalm 15 introduces this theme with the question, Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Psalm 16 advances the theme by magnifying the blessings and actions that accompany being in God's presence. Since Peter and Paul quote this psalm and apply it directly to Jesus, it is entirely messianic. Psalm 16 illustrates the security and eternity of God's Holy One. Primarily, it refers to the resurrection of Christ by which he conquered death for us. What David foretells about the resurrection did not really happen to him, but applies only to the Messiah. Every Christian can take confidence in God's protection, even to the resurrection from the dead. On this resurrection of our Lord Sunday, we will see that God is our refuge. Let us rejoice. David starts this psalm, Guard me, O God, for I take refuge in, him, in you. In the rest of the psalm, David develops what it means to have God as a refuge. Humans are helpless and insecure, but in his potent God, David finds a harbor or defense against his most fatal enemies, sin, the, the death, and the devil. Messiah faced these same enemies. He willingly bore the curse of uh, our sins, uh, battled the devil head on, and became obedient to death on a cross. In Christ's fight for our, resurrect, for our salvation, the Messiah took the same fortress, uh, looked to the same fortress of uh, the Father's strength. First, since God is our refuge, let us rejoice with the saints. David now pictures the Messiah's firm commitment to the Lord. 
He addresses the Lord, the great I am, who is both uh, who is both free and faithful in his love. The Lord provides blessings that the Messiah relishes in the present and life-giving blessings that he ponders for the future. He is both able and willing to hand out his love freely. While on earth nothing could sway Jesus from the mission of salvation his Father had given him, even in times of severe trial in Gethsemane and on Calvary, Jesus turned to his Father and delighted in doing his will. He feared, loved, and trust in his Father uh, above everything else. He found joy in the people he calls holy ones or saints. They were saints because God had set them apart from the rest of the world through his call to faith. With hearts that were changed on the inside, they produced a, produce a consecrated character on the outside. Jesus also delighted in the worship of his Father. His joy in true worship is expressed best in those acts of devotion Jesus avoided. Though Jesus would uh, eventually pour out his blood as the once-for-all sacrifice for all sin. He would not take part in the worship of false gods with the hope of receiving blessings from them. He would distance himself so far from the worship of false gods that he would not even mention their names. The famous conductor Bernard Reichel was preparing a great choir to sing the Messiah. At the last practice, a lady soprano with a very beautiful voice was singing the solo, I know that my Redeemer lives. Her intonation was wonderful. His, her voice was clear. It was a clear as a bell. It was a voice that came from God. But the famous conductor said to this gifted lady, do you really believe that your Redeemer lives? The soprano squirmed a little and said, why yes, I do believe my Redeemer lives. Reichel said, then said, then sing it so as to make me believe it and sing it as to make the whole world believe that Jesus lives. The soloist sang it again, but this time with the joy of a living Redeemer filling her body. She sang with the, uh, her eyes on the Lord and with her soul absorbed with his presence. She sang until uh, her passion brought tears to the eyes of everyone in the room. When she had finished, Reichel wiped his own eyes and said, I believe it. I believe it. I believe Jesus lives. Since God is our refuge, let us rejoice with the saints by showing how much we love our Lord. Like the saints whom the Lord calls glorious, let us rejoice that Jesus has risen. Join the saints in whom the Lord's delight, the Lord delights by proclaiming, I believe with all my heart and soul that I have a Redeemer, not only from Calvary, but an advocate at his throne. Because Jesus lives, we too shall live forever. Because of Christ's resurrection, we have hope, a sure hope. Peter says, By his great mercy he gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Second, God is our refuge. Let us rejoice. Rejoice in your inheritance. An inheritance meant as much to the people of ancient times as it does to us today. An inheritance is a way of obtaining property and possessions. The psalmist likens his assigned place in God's eternal promised land to the inheritance in the earthly promised land. When the Israelite tribes were given property in the promised land, the Levites went without an earthly inheritance. They received food and support in the form of a tithe from people who brought sacrifices. To them the Lord said, I am your share in your inheritance among the Israelites. In their dis disinheritance, they ended up with the most uh, precious blessing of all. As the Messiah considers his pre uh, present blessings in the psalm, he too can claim uh, no land. His goods were for the most part supplied to him by others. None of that man. The Messiah says, Lord, you are the cup that has been given to me. You have secured an allotment for me. Because Jesus humbled himself and drank the cup of suffering, he was exalted as Savior. Now he drinks the cup of eternal pleasure and joy. The portion and inheritance Jesus won is an eternal life of joy at God's right hand in heaven. That was all the inheritance he needed or wanted. The Messiah vows, yes, a delightful inheritance is mine. 
We also delight in the same joyous union with the Father. We confess with Martin Luther in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress, and do what they will, hate, steal, hurt, or kill. Though all may be gone, our victory is won, the kingdom's ours forever. Because God is our refuge, let us rejoice in our inheritance. When our parents die or die, we may receive an inheritance. In biblical times, sons inherited the family's property and the estate. Generous parents leave an inheritance for their children. Maybe you have been blessed with funds from your parents' estate or the estate of a loved one. But don't count on a bequest today. If your parents live a long life, make poor investments, or richly enjoy their retirement, there may not be anything left to inherit. Or your parents may not divide the estate equally for various reasons. You aren't guaranteed an earthly inheritance, but you can rejoice in your spiritual inheritance. Through faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will inherit gifts far more valuable than property and possessions. Though you did nothing to earn them, you will receive them. Through Christ's resurrection, he gives you a faith into a living hope. By Christ's great mercy, he gave you an inheritance that is undying, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you. Did you hear that? Jesus Christ has secured an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade away, and one that is reserved in heaven for you. Paul directs you, whatever you do, keep working at it with all your heart, because you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. The book of Hebrews declares, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Third, God is our refuge. Let us rejoice in God's providence. In his heaven-sent care, the Lord provides counsel, instruction, per perpetual presence, and security. The Messiah says, I will bless the Lord who guides me. He praises the Lord for the blessings he receives. The instruction Christ receives isn't describing a process of learning that uh, takes place in one's sleep. Rather, the instruction he receives keeps him awake at night and drives away sleep. In his ministry, Jesus uh, often spends sleepless nights in prayer with his Father, especially as his crucifixion drew near. The coaching and counsel that the Messiah received led him to find his confidence and security in the Lord. In response to guard, uh, God guarding him, the Messiah asserts, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. While Christ initially called on the Lord to guard him, the Lord is now thrust into the front of the of battle. The safety of having the Lord at one side in court or in battle leads to the poise expressed in, his word, in those words, I will not be shaken. The utter determination of Jesus in his life, especially in his final months, is a testimony to his spirit. Since God is our refuge, rejoice in God's providence. Throughout scripture, God promises to care for us. Here are a few of his promises in the Psalms. God is our refuge and strength, a helper can, who can always be found in times of trouble. My God is my rock. I take refuge in him. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. Psalm 18, verse 2. Place your burden on the Lord and he will support you. He will never allow the righteous to fall. Psalm 55, 22. When I look back over my life, I am amazed how God protected me and led me despite my failings. Despite making a difficult road even more challenging, the Lord provided for my family and provided for a way for me to complete my training to become a pastor and then to return to the public ministry. When I look back, the only way that happened was through God's protection and providence, his love and grace. Think of how God has cared for you. Some of you have survived a war, a natural disaster, a disease that could have taken your life. Maybe he blessed you with an unexpected gift or sympathetic parents. Maybe he provided for you through a caring neighbor or a generous friend or co-worker. Now think about your spiritual life. It is only because of Christ's death and resurrection that you have faith, forgiveness, and the certainty of eternal life. 
A story is told of a woman in Germany who didn't believe in immortality. In keeping with her unbelief, she told the funeral director to bury her in a sepulcher of heavy masonry covered with a heavy stone slab on which was inscribed her declaration that this was the end. But somehow a seed was lodged in the mortar, and as it fed on her dead body, it grew to be a tree that burst apart the stone coffin. For God is our refuge. Uh, let us rejoice in the resurrection. Psalm 16 reaches the zenith in the, the last three verses. Peter applies them directly to Jesus, the, the Messiah, in his Pentecost sermon. He quotes Psalm 18 through 11. Psalm 8 through 11 to assure the crowd that Jesus knew the Lord was always before him and would not abandon him. In his sermon at the city in Antioch, Paul <coughs> cites verse 10, You will not let your Holy One see decay. In both instances, the New Testament applies the psalm directly to Christ and also considers them proof of God's resurrection promise that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. On the basis of God's blessings, and especially because of the Lord's eternal, powerful presence, the Messiah can rejoice in the sure promise of the resurrection. He is so confident in the Lord, uh, and it is so deep that he command, commits even his flesh to God's perpetual care. Verse 10 is one of the clearest verses on Christ's resurrection in the Old Testament. The Father would not allow the body of the Messiah to stay in the grave, so that his physical flesh would begin to decompose. The Messiah foretold a resurrection that was more than just a longer life on earth. His ideas focused on the joy of being in his Father's presence. His life in heaven would not be temporary, but endless. Since God is our refuge, let us rejoice in the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. The unbeliever Robert Ingersoll told this story. One night I was lecturing and took occasion to show that the resurrection of Lazarus was probably a planned affair to bolster the waning fortunes of Jesus. Lazarus was to take sick and die. The girls were to bury him and send for Jesus. Lazarus was to fake death until Jesus could, uh, would come and say, Lazarus, come forth. To emphasize the situation, I said, can anyone tell me why Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth? Down by the door was a pale-faced man, uh, and he rose and with a shrill voice said, Yes, I can tell you. If my Lord had not said Lazarus, he would have had the whole graveyard of Bethany coming out to him. Because of Christ, our bodies will come out of our graves. This year, as I opened the door to the sanctuary, I wasn't hit with that overwhelming aroma of the scent of flowers. Our worship on Easter will be very different year, this year. We will yearn for the time when we can worship together again. But God is alive and Christ is arisen. God is our refuge. Let us rejoice with, in, let us rejoice with the saints in our inheritance, in God's providence, and especially in Christ's resurrection. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith by saying uh, the confession uh, in your bulletin guide. I believe in God, our Father, our Lord and Father in heaven, who made us the crown of his creation and preserves us with every good thing, that we may live before him in peace and joy. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's only Son from eternity, who became a man for us sinners, who redeemed us from Satan's power with his holy, precious blood, rose from death, and made us his own to live with him now and forever. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who draws us to our risen Savior through the Gospel, who keeps us united in the true faith, forgives our sin, and at the end of all things, will raise us from death to eternal life. Amen. We continue with the resurrection prayer. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for giving us the victory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly 
Father, you have not forsaken us or left us to our own destruction, but kept your ancient promise to send a Savior. We praise you for his perfect life, his innocent death, and his glorious resurrection. Because of your faithfulness to your promises, today is a day of victory. Savior Jesus, we praise you for carrying out God's plan of salvation. The resurrection is undeniable evidence that you have triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Because of your resurrection, today is a day of victory. Holy Spirit, we praise you that through the gospel you have led us to know that Jesus is our risen Savior. Today we say confidently, as did the angel, he is not here, he has risen. Preserve us in the faith. Raise us to newsiness of life. Continue to lavish on us the blessings on, of this day of victory. Try and God, kindle in our hearts a love for all people. Equip us with both the will and the words to tell others that Jesus has indeed risen from the grave. Use us to share the message of the empty tomb so that others too may rejoice in Jesus' Easter victory. Lord of life, comfort all who stand at death's door. Comfort all who mourn the loss of a loved one who died in the faith in the risen Savior. Comfort each of us with the assurance that because Jesus lives, we too will live. Remind us all that the death of a Christian is not a defeat. Because of Jesus, it is a day of victory. Dear Jesus, our Savior and friend, there is so much sickness in our state and world, and many of your Christians have also been stricken. We pray that it is your gracious and good will to help all among us who are ill and to relieve them of their pain and discomfort, especially uh, because of this virus. Spare their lives. We are especially concerned about the welfare of the, very, of the very young and the elderly, and we entreat them to show them your compassion. We also pray for those who are caring for um, the sick individuals at our hospitals. Keep all of them uh, 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 under your care, give them strength, and protect them from getting uh, uh, ill themselves. Keep all of us, your lambs and your sheep, continually under your watchful care, preserving us from illness and harm. At your invitation, we come to you with these requests. Hear us, O Jesus. Amen. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for giving us the victory through your Son, Jesus, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue by praying the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue by singing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. We'll, that's hymn 150. We'll sing verses 1 and 2.
our beloved friend, whose continual presence has been promised us, be at your side in all our troubles. Give us strength to bear them and wisdom to overcome them. Grant us grace to endure every sorrow that comes our way, and courage to cope with every disappointment. You are the help of the helpless, who lifts up those who are fallen. Therefore, comfort and relieve us according to our individual needs. As we travel the hard road of suffering and sorrow, may we learn to love you more and eagerly await the treasures you have reserved for us. All this we ask for the glory of your name, O triumphant Christ, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of the Lord. Go, brothers and sisters, in the joy of forgiveness and the hope of the resurrection. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Bless us, risen Savior, as we enter our mission field with the message of life that our dying world needs. We conclude our service by singing, Christ the Lord is risen today, uh, hymn 149, we'll sing stanzas one through four. being part, uh, taking part on the, this uh, Easter service. We pray that God would bless each and every one of you with the joyous news that Christ is arisen and how that fills our lives with hope and joy and peace. Um, until we meet again, the Lord bless you and keep you.